Thank you very much. Um, yes, I come from the Division of Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery here. Um, I trained in general surgery and in plastic surgery, and then I did a fellowship in craniofacial surgery. And those are some of the rarer diseases that we deal with. Uh, fortunately uh, or unfortunately, we deal with a lot of kids, and you just saw one of your first slides uh, um, show that you know a lot of these affect kids. Um, so I think problems that help the life of a child is really important, and, it, and, it, and it, it's important to me, and I think it's going to be important to those who are doing the kind of things that you're doing. Um, what I was asked to do is present just a small snippet of what I do. This was a case that we had done, and it demonstrates very, very nicely stuff that we didn't do five and ten years ago, things that we would have struggled to do, and the knowledge that has come out in the past few years to make this kind of case much easier um, is, is, is so important for myself and for also for our patients. So I'll introduce you to patient S. We won't give any names. But this is a seven-month-old who was referred here to the Mount Sinai Cleft and Cranial Facial Center because she was noted to have some distortion of her eye there. Um, we did a CAT scan of her, or a pediatrician did a CAT scan of her, and lo and behold, she's got a tumor growing out of the bone of her lateral orbit. This is not fairly common. Most kids do not have this, and we don't see this a lot. Um, you know, uh, facial tumors are more commonly skin cancers that are seen in older patients with sun exposure. But, but uh, bony tumors in, in, in infancy is not the most common thing, so there's not a lot of people that, that deal with this, and you, you see a couple of these maybe in your career. Um, but this was a, a patient who was referred in and had a, a tumor. So the question is now, what do we do with it? Um, certainly this is something that we have to biopsy, and they did do a little biopsy at her former institution, um, and they found that it was a tumor, it was not a cancer, um, but it was going to continue growing, and this would eventually probably distort her vision um, and probably distort most of her facial skeleton, although it would not spread and, and, and probably cause imminent death. Uh, but this is something that needed to be done now. It's not something that we felt could wait until she was an adult or an older child. This needed to be addressed now. So yes, uh, we could take this out. The question is, what are you going to do once it's out? We're taking out most of her lateral orbit, you know, the, 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 the housing of the, of the globe, um, taking out some of her cheekbone, and that would be pretty distorting um, if we didn't do anything to reconstruct it. Um, probably 20 years ago, we'd take some bone from somewhere and try and build something that looked like an orbit. Um, but we have better. Um, we have some tools nowadays that people like yourself have developed to, to solve problems like this. So one of the things we, we have now is we can take a, an image like this and make a three-dimensional CAT scan so we can get a picture of her. And I can take that CAT scan and I can now build with 3D bioprinting an acrylic model of her facial skeleton. Not only that, the top picture shows her facial skeleton, but I can take the tumor out. Um, once that tumor's out, now I have a mold of what her face should look like on that side without the tumor because I couldn't really build anything to replace that if I didn't know what the normal side looks like. Um, that lower model was built by flipping the image from her left side onto her right side. So even though I don't know what her right side really looks like, I do know what her left side looks like, and if I can mirror that and flip that around and make a negative of it, I can pretty much build her normal skeleton again. Now, what I can do is I can take some products that we didn't have years ago. Um, in, the, in the 50s and 60s, when you broke your face or you cracked your face, they'd put you together with dental wire. Um, they'd twist the wire, and the little pieces had to be sort of put together like a sort of a, a quilt. Um, then people decided, well, we could make little, little erector sets. Most of you don't know what an erector set is, but it's a, it's a toy that you, if you were born in the 60s, you built, and it had little screws and plates and stuff. Um, and nowadays, we do still put people together with small little titanium plates and screws. Um, this piece in the bottom here is a novel um, material. It's made of polylactic acid, which is a byproduct of muscle, um, and it's moldable and bendable. So I can take this piece of mesh down here that I'm holding in my hand way down at the bottom. I can bend it around this sterilized um, model of her skull and rebuild a part much like Lego that would be an exact replica of what I want to rebuild. And that's what we did. And you can see it snaps on to her model very nicely. Um, and if I can line this with her own bone, 
I kind of now have a framework for what her facial skeleton should be. So we did that. We took that, and that's lo looking at it from the front, and we can actually wrap it around so it forms a nice little re resorbable place. This little stuff, by the way, goes away in about 12 to 24 months. So unlike an adult where I don't, it doesn't really matter if I leave you with a, sort of some metal there, this stuff goes away. So this child, as she grows, and hopefully she will grow naturally on that side if she's not subjected to radiation, this will go away, and the bone that's left behind that I will fill this with will grow with her, and she'll have a, a very normal-looking skeleton. So this was her at the operation. You can see she's getting a little bit more distorted in that eye on the left. Um, you can see her cheek is pushed out on that side, and even her eyes are not at the same level. So we dissected not to be, I sort of took out the gruesome ones. This is looking down towards her feet um, up here. Up, up here is her, her nose is up here, and this is sort of her cheekbone. And you can see all of this is sort of tumor eating away at the side of her eyeball. Not her eyeball, but into her globe. Eventually, it probably would get into the eyeball, but her eyeball was spared. But this is all the stuff that we had to resect. Once that's gone, I can take that little model I've made, take a little piece of the skull from the back of the head, which is expendable because that will regrow, and now I can line my, my model with new bone. So all of this new bone is her bone. It's nothing off a shelf, um, and that will be used to reconstruct her orbit. So just as one example here, this is stuff that we didn't have you know, several years ago, but uh, ideas that hopefully came out of things like this hackathon will make this a better reconstruction for me, a better life for her, and hopefully stimulate people to think how we can even do better than this and maybe even reconstruct, you know, to grow her own bone in, in a shape where I don't have to sort of put it into a model, but I can actually take uh, something and, and rebuild exactly what had come out.